Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Senators, staff, distinguished guests, graduates and their guests, thank you for the honour to speak to you this morning. I'm here, allegedly, to supply you with some wisdom, whether you demand it or not. Uh, and I'll be trying not to run a, a deficit against my allotted time, but of course they seem to be all the rage around the world at the moment, and with interest rates as they are, what does it matter? Perhaps no one outside of our business school understands inflation. Congratulations on your graduation today. Today, my message is, act now, feel grateful, make an impact. I want you to trust me, so I'll share a little bit about myself. I grew up with a single mum, and she was often sick during my childhood, couldn't always work, and we were sometimes reliant on welfare. I went to public schools, eight of them, and when I started here, I recall being asked in a lecture theatre of hundreds of politics students, who is here from a public school? Vanishingly few people put their hands up. Sometimes I'm incredibly impressed my mum was able to keep it all together. When we'd be moving around, we didn't know where we'd be staying next, sometimes only in a place for weeks at a time. When we lived in Melbourne for six months, we probably lived in about ten different places, including what I recall was a backpacker hostel, sharing a single bed, head to toe, as a kid. But she kept going. And so, because of that, I can be here today, and I'm grateful to her for that. I should also be honest, when I was younger, particularly at uni, I was angrier. Sometimes I was incredibly sad, sometimes so anxious, and sometimes these things felt unbearable. I did some silly things, but what helped me to heal those feelings is my theme today. Act now, feel grateful, make an impact. And I hope my speech today can help you feel reassured at a time of change in your lives. We have so much to be grateful for. You probably feel grateful today you'll never have to sit another exam again. But we can also be grateful we've been able to attend one of the world's leading education institutions. We've had an opportunity to do something that most people in human history have not had attending a university, learning in a field you're passionate about. For this, we can be grateful. And we can be, you can be, particularly grateful to have made it through in such a challenging time around the world. And you should be so proud of that. Life can bring stress. The good news is it will rarely be as bad as when you're sitting an Econometrics 2271 exam. When I was in your position many years ago, well, not that many years ago, I remember how utterly unmoored, fearful, I felt, as I was finishing up at university, wondering if I would get a decent job, or any job, if I would amount to anything, if the best years of my life would be behind me on this campus at university. And some of you may feel the same right now. I remember applying for grad jobs, and often I didn't even get interviews. Seven years later, I know my career as a journalist developed because I'm passionate about it, and I love being able to make an impact. I was fortunate to become a journalist as someone who studied economics, not journalism, but what we learned here in this place helps us to think about, to think about the world and help me to think about the world in a way most journalists do not. I took an interest in journalism because I felt the media doesn't really understand economic issues. All this time later, I feel like I can confirm that's the case. People think economics and the disciplines in the business school are dry and boring, but they're wrong. We've learned a framework to understand the world, to make decisions, to make choices in our lives, even in dating. Journalists are so often reacting when they write, but economics enables those of us who have been through this hall to assess decisions. For example, why would you build a rail line which has a negative cost-benefit ratio at a time when there's a labour shortage, something I was looking at earlier this year. And I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to work in this field and make an impact. Personally, I'm also grateful to my mum and to my grandparents who I lived with for many years. Grateful they helped me become who I am, and I'm proud that my mum is now giving uni a go herself, smashing down the barriers that have held her back in her life. 
We can be grateful that living standards are better for us than any prior generation. There's a startup in Perth using AI to detect heart disease. You can video call family in Tajikistan. You can access most of the information ever discovered with a device that's in your pocket, and hopefully off. Don't take my word for it, by the way. Research suggests feeling grateful makes people healthier, more optimistic, and allegedly, they have a better love life. Who am I to dispute the science? The thing which will bring you the most satisfaction in life will be impacting the lives of others. It doesn't always need to be earth-shattering. It might be uncovering a fraud or shining difficulties on, shining a light on the difficulties of small retailers in Yagan Square or giving a voice to a person who's been through addiction or homelessness. In that last example, I wrote an article last year on this topic, on homelessness, and, um, you know, I thought I'd go in there and I'd find the best solutions and I'd write it up and that it would be obvious, but they're not obvious. It's complicated. Today, I'm not just speaking to those of you who feel uncertain, as I did. Many people leave this place and they find jobs they've worked for years to get, but it doesn't always feel quite right. When I left our campus, uh, I missed the campus culture, engaging with people and being involved in something bigger. Scrolling Facebook unceasingly after work was comparatively unsatisfying. Now, I started a website selling socks, 14oak.com, and for every pair we sold, we donate a pair to a person in Perth in need. And you know what? It's small. We've probably donated maybe 100 over a couple of years. But I tell you what, on a rainy night in Perth, when you hand a man sheltering on Murray Street a small bag of things and he seems genuinely shocked to receive a gift, it's unforgettable. It might just be making an impact in a small way, but hopefully it made his night just that little bit better. You don't need to quit a job as an investment banker and become a social worker to make an impact. And I want to return to the lecture theatre in my first fortnight at university with the public school kids holding their hands up. Or even further back to the kids at school in Sydney who were quite cruel to me for being poor. That's a Sydney thing, I think. I may never have the wealth or the luxuries of some of the people I've met, but I think I can be happier because I'm grateful and I'm trying to make an impact. We talk a lot about inequality. So often it seems motivated, though, by lowering the top instead of lifting the bottom. So I ask you to be someone who creates opportunity. That's one way you can make an impact. The startup you want to launch? Act now. Volunteer once a month to help vulnerable people. Act now. Argue for a better society. Act now. And embrace friends who are a bit different or from a different background. Act now. As you're lining up waiting for your name to be called, think of what you're grateful for and who you're grateful to and tell them. Thank you for the honour of being here this morning and congratulations. You should be so incredibly proud of completing this chapter of your life. I hope you can feel inspired. I hope you can feel inspired to act, to make an impact, to feel grateful, and I wish you great joy in the next chapter of your lives. Thank you.